Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the famous Franz Lehar operetta, The Merry Widow, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. In our audience tonight, we are glad to have a number of the more than 3,000 members of the United Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Association from all over the country who are in Los Angeles for their annual convention. These men working hand-in-hand with America's railroads do much to help make America the best-fed and best-nourished nation on Earth. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you very much, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the beautiful and glamorous Dorothy Kirsten is the beautiful and glamorous Mary Widow, Madam Sonia. Jack Kirkwood plays Baron Popoff, and I'm Prince Danilo, attaché to the Marsovian Embassy in Paris. Where is Prince Danilo? Uh, that's Baron Popoff, the Marsovian ambassador, calling me. Where is Prince Danilo? You see, I'm absolutely indispensable to him. Where is that no-good bum? <laughs> you can see I'm indispensable. Probably wasting his time at that wretched nightclub, Max Eames. Messenger, go down to Maxime, see if you can locate Prince Danilo. Well, if that's where they're going to look for me, maybe that's where I'd better be. My native land is calling me to come and work from one to three. Oh, as there isn't much to do, I only come at half past two. Diplomacy exhausts a man, and I do all the work I can, but never ever get to bed until I paint this town quite red. With all my lovely Maxim girls, I give them cash instead of pearls. So all my blondes and brunettes say, Come out with us tonight and play. Dash off to Maxine's, where fun and frolic beans. While all the girls I flatter, they laugh and kiss and chatter. Lo, lo, do, do, zhu, zhu. Glo, glo, ma, go, fu, fu. It really doesn't matter. I kiss the first at hand. And when the cocks will pop, we dance and never stop. The ladies smile so sweetly, I catch and kiss them easily. Lo, lo, do, do, zhu, zhu. Glo, glo, ma, go, fu, fu. Till I forget the wheel. Prince Danilo, I'm shocked. Send these girls away. I must talk to you about affairs of state. Oh, and that's all, girls. Oh. Goodbye. Go, go, clo, clo. Shoo, shoo, fru, fru. Uh, now, what seems to be the trouble, Baron? Prince Danilo, our native land, Marsovia, is in its hour of greatest peril. We are broke. 
But the Marsovian government is supported entirely by income taxes from its citizens. What happened? Last year, there was only one citizen in Marsovia who had any income to tax. <laughs> oh, yes. The banker. Mr., uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, well, it's no matter. He's dead. But his widow was here in Paris, making googly eyes at Frenchmen. Mm-hmm. And the Frenchmen are making googly eyes right back. At her and her 20 million. Now, if she marries a Frenchman, her fortune will no longer be taxable in Marsovia, and our poor, dear native country will be... Busted? Roger. <laughs> now, if the widow marries a Marsovian citizen, the 20 millions will remain in our dear Marsovia, and everything will be, if you'll pardon the expression, hunky-dory. Well, that pretty well covers the plot. What do you expect me to do? you got to put something in the pot, boy. <laughs> but how? By marrying the rich widow. Why don't you marry her? Oh, how can I? Oh, that's right. You're married, unfortunately. You have no idea how, unfortunately. I <laughs> Tell me, can I meet this merry widow before I marry her? Of course. She's guest of honor at an embassy party tonight. <laughs> There she is. See how the Frenchmen throng about her. I'll dance with all of you. The evening's young. Oh, good Lord. What's the matter? That's Madame Sonia. I can't propose to her. Why not? Baron, I can't tell it to you, but there's a very good reason why I shouldn't marry Madame Sonia. There's an even better reason why you should. Please, all right, Madame Sonia, please. Very well. If you insist, I'll sing for you. It's an old legend from my native land of Marsovia. Danilo, go and propose to her. Now, this is against my better judgment, Baron, but I'll do it. 
before Marsovia. Oh, it's such a charming city, this Paris. Danilo. Ah, you remember my name, Madam Sonia. I've tried to forget it. Oh, no, 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 please, Sonia. Let's not be harsh. Harsh? After all, you left me waiting at the church. Well, it wasn't my fault. It was my uncle. <laughs> Your uncle thought I wasn't good enough for you. Anyhow, I'm rich now and a widow with everything I want. Do you have love? <laughs> Luckily, I don't believe in love. You believed in mine once. Now, really, Prince Danilo, do you imagine we can pick up where you left me at the church door? But my uncle... Now that I'm worth 20 million, maybe your uncle would approve of me, huh? Oh, now, please, Sonia, try to forget the past. Waltz with me, the way you used to. Is calling with its magic charms and crawling to its ringing and singing. You lift your feet, follow the chime of the time of the waltz's beat. Oh, come away, away, music is playing. Linger not vainly delaying. Take your partners while you may. partner at the end of a wall? If I'm in love with her. Oh, come now, Danilo. You're not in love with me. You're in love with my money. You think I'm like all these Frenchmen who swarm about you? All oh, men are alike. All right, I'll show you. May I have the next dance? If you wish. Good. I shall auction it off. You wouldn't dare. Gentlemen, your attention, please. Well, what is it? Oh, it is How many of you would like a dance with a merry widow? Oh. Oh. I have the next dance. Now, who will pay 10,000 francs for a dance with Madame Sonia? Not a single bid? Well, then, I shall have to dance with her myself. It will be your last dance with me, Danilo. Oh? For I'm marrying a Frenchman. I don't believe it. Tomorrow I shall be the wife of Monsieur de Jolidon. No. He has proposed to me, and I've decided to accept him. Well, what do you have to say to that? There's an old Marsovian song that says much more than I could say. There once were two royal children who loved when the world was so young. But never were happy together It's just as the poet has sung The prince never told of his passion For very good reason, no doubt 
And so the princess was unhappy Because he would never speak out When he would not ask for her hand, she promised to marry another. Was more than a prince could stand. Most gracious and beautiful lady, it was not a good thing to do. All women are faithless and fickle, and only a woman are you. Oh, do you suppose I am? <laughs> I don't mean to cry. I shall not go dreaming about you. That's what the prince said, and not I. And thus said the prince as he ended. There, Mary, I've finished with you. With that, the prince coolly departed. And so will I. Where are you going? I'm going away from embassies and merry widows. I'll go back to Maxine's. I've done with lovers' dreams. The girls will laugh and greet me. They will not trick and tease me. Lo, lo, do, do, zoo, zoo. Clo, clo, my go, clo, clo. I'm going back to Maxine's. I've, I've had enough of you. Oh, buddy, I'm sure now. second act of The Merry Widow in just a moment. Last year, as they went about their job of helping you live better, America's railroad set a new high record for operating efficiency. The average freight train hauled more tons and hauled them faster to produce more transportation service for each hour it was on the road than ever before. And from that record of performance, ever more and better production of the things you use goes hand in hand with improved railroad service. Now, how was this new record of railroad performance accomplished? The answer to that question is important to you, for it points the way towards still better railroad service in the future. In large measure, the record efficiency and economy achieved by the railroads in 1952 was due to their continuing improvement program. In the past seven years, America's railroads have spent an average of more than a billion dollars a year on that program. In 1952, they spent an estimated $1,300,000,000, the second largest annual capital expenditure for improvements ever made by the railroads. And that expenditure would have been even greater, except that shortages of steel slowed down the railroads' program to increase still further the supply of freight cars, which are so essential to America's military and productive might. Looking ahead, you can be sure the railroads will continue to put major emphasis on securing vital materials needed to carry on their intensive freight car and locomotive building program. And you can be equally sure that the railroads will continue to make other improvements right up to the limit of available money and materials so that you and all America can have the railroad transportation service we need for commerce and defense. <laughs> Now here's Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Lehar's The Merry Widow, starring Gordon McRae as Danilo and Dorothy Kirsten as Madame Sonia, with Jack Kirkwood as Baron Popoff. <laughs> Thank you. 
Danilo. I might have known I'd find you in this low cabaret. Oh, hello, Baron. You certainly made a mess of things. I trust you with an important mission to marry Madame uh, Sonia and save the Marsovian treasury. And what happens? She's marrying a Frenchman tomorrow. I'm sorry I failed you, Baron. But it's impossible to figure out a woman. Oh, I know. There's something wrong with all of them. <laughs> you know, when a man marries, he gets hooked with one that's either fat, homely, selfish, cruel, or expensive. Unless he waits. And if he waits, he gets hooked with a combination of all of them. <laughs> oh, the women. Oh, the women. How to win them, Helen Gray. That's an art I'm rather dim in, for there is no other way. Winning women, winning women, for their lover. How is done, that's what nobody discovers. Not even an Edison. You may study her ways as you can, but a woman's too much for a man. It is deeper than diving for pearls. Courting girls, 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 with her fair flaxen hair, eyes of blue, she's a long way to knowing for you, she is dark or she's fair, she may smile or may frown, never mind, you will get done proud. Women, 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 As you can, but a woman's too much for a man. It is deeper than diving for women, 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 girls, 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 girls. With her fair flaxen hair, eyes of blue, she's a long way to knowing for you. She is dark, but she's fair. observation, gentlemen. Mm, Madam Sonia, what brings you to Maxime's? I wonder, Baron Popoff, what you say about the women. Does that apply to your wife? My wife? Ah, don't mention her hallowed name. She is a paragon of feminine virtue. Well, the paragon just ran off with a Monsieur de Jolidon. What? Oh, but he's the Frenchman you're supposed to marry tomorrow. Oh, I just made that up. Well, if my wife has run off, then I am legally divorced. How's that? Under Section 4 of the Marsovian Married Man's Protective Act. <laughs> if your wife runs off with a Frenchman, you are legally divorced. How <laughs> convenient. And now that I am free, I have the honor, dear lady, to ask you for your hand. In marriage? How else? <laughs> Will you marry me, Madam Sonia? Before I accept, I must tell you one teensy weensy thing. Hmm. If I marry again, I lose all my property. <laughs> all your millions? Down to the last mill. <laughs> Maybe I was just a little hasty. <laughs> That's no way to put some money in the pot, boy. <laughs> Is it true, Sonia, you lose all your money if you marry again? Yes. Then... Well? Well, can't you guess what I want to say? Why not say it if you want to? I love you. And I love you. I've always loved you. Oh, sweetheart. Now, wait a minute. You're going to marry her without any money? Of course. The man's crazy. But you understand. I lose my money because I shall give it... All to my new husband. The woman's crazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh, they're all right. I'm the one that's crazy. <laughs> now, don't you worry, Baron. At least the money remains in Marsovia and the national treasury is saved. Tell me you love me again, Danilo. Not in words, my sweet. Let me tell you with our own walls. Oh, I say not what I may. The swaying dance is saying, love me, dear. Every touch of fingers tells me what I know. Says to you, it's true, it's true. I love you so. Beating time, 
Lovely Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our hearty good thanks to Jack Kirkwood, who was Baron Popoff, and to our entire company. The Merry Widow, with music by Franz Lehar and book and lyrics by Victor Leon, Leo Stein, and Adrian Rose, with English adaptation by Georges Edouard, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? These days, more and more young people are looking to the YMCA to help meet their physical, mental, and spiritual needs. And the YMCA depends on volunteer leaders, people like yourself, to help carry on its important work. On the railroads, for instance, the railroad YMCA, well known as a home away from home for thousands of men, has also taken an active part in youth activities with more than 100,000 members joining in programs for boys. If you would like to make a real contribution to the young people of our country, you could hardly do better than join the volunteer leaders of the YMCA. Thank you, Marvin. And now, folks, here again is our guest, the scintillating Miss Kirsten. Mm -hmm. time I sing The Merry Widow, it seems just as exciting as an opening night. Well, that's because, Dorothy, it's a score that'll never grow old. And you were wonderful. What a note you hit. What was that, a C? <laughs> well, so we have another great musical evening planned for next Monday night, too. Who's guesting, Gordy? Well, the charming Nadine Connor, Dorothy. And it's Rogers and Hammerstein's musical triumph, Carousel. Can you get a merry-go-round on the showboat? Dorothy, don't you know that the railroads carry everything? Oh, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and folks, after Carousel, we're going to give you a fine new piece of Americana, Irving Berlin's Miss Liberty, with Virginia Haskins as the girl who modeled for the mighty statue. And then to round out February, we'll send you Sigmund Romberg's Blue Paradise and Noel Coward's Bittersweet. All aboard! And folks, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, and Carousel, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> The radio adaptation of The Merry Widow has been based on the original American production by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library, Incorporated. Gordon McRae can soon be seen in the Technicolor production The Desert Song. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for The American Railroad. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features George London on NBC.